Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the technical difference between freelancing and permanent work. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, the question I have for you is, from a technical perspective, how much do you think freelancing software differs from working permanently on one single project? Well, uh, there's a bit of a definition question here. You could interpret, okay, that's just what I'm reading into this, but then again, my English isn't flawless, so I might be interpreting it wrong. Because what you ask me could be interpreted as, okay, what's the difference between people working at like a product company or a quote-unquote permanent single, uh, one single product type of deal? Uh, like what's the quality of the work that they are doing, what's the difference between that and the freelancing software that you might find. That's one interpretation and the other one is like what's the process, like what, what you are delivering, what you are building, etc, etc. Uh, so let's go with the quality thing first. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, on average, yes, you can expect, uh, you can probably suspect the scope of projects like the size of the code bases and the quality, overall software quality is going to be a lot higher in like a product company type of thing than it will ever be for a freelancing project because usually the freelancing projects are much smaller because they, like if you are a freelancer um, you are usually working alone or maybe with a few other freelancers it's uh, it's not like that's kind of the contrast right or like that that's the diff that's the difference usually you have someone who works on smaller projects for a certain amount of time and then like goes on to the next thing or you have some product company where like they have a single product where they like hire people to work on that continuously for quite usually for quite a lot of a lot of time a long time so uh generally that is the thing like, I mean there are freelancers who are really really good as I like to say the best freelancers or consultants are usually people who got tired of being in a product company or something like that and they started their own thing or they decided hey you know what I've been working and I see this uh, this happens like it's like the most common thing for consultancies that's why they are so annoying all the time is that they they try to headhunt and snipe as much as humanly possible from the major companies because they they know that uh, if you can make it in one of those companies, you can very likely make it outside. And the incentive is, of course, that you're going to make more money if you're a consultant. Uh, so that's usually the way it goes. Uh, but that's, as I said, at the same time, if you're a freelancer, uh, it can also vary quite a lot. If you are a self-taught freelancer, uh, or if you're hiring a freelancer, it's a little bit like buying the cat in the bag. Uh, you, you you have no way of knowing if this is a good person or a bad person without being a professional software de developer yourself. That's why it's so high risk to hire a freelancer. Uh, because they could be good or they can be absolute crap and not actually know it, uh, the first thing. Then again, that, like, uh, that difference I hope should make a lot of sense. It's like going to, a, I don't know, a black market doctor versus someone who works in a hospital uh, could work out could not it uh, doesn't have to work out uh, and if we go with the other definition like the like the way that you deliver software in like freelancing versus a, like uh, a product company once again it's really down to like what is the size of the project and the company that you're working at because if you're in this small little small little startup or you're working as a freelancer uh, the differences could be like fairly small, not not really all that major in terms of like how you do the actual software development. Uh, the one thing I will say that probably the major like the biggest difference, but then, then again, this is the same difference. You could work at an agency or as a consultant and never see this sort of uh, thing, and it's the I will argue it's the biggest tail any software developer has as to the level of skill that they have acquired through their years of experience uh, or rather like at what level of development have you been working and that is when you get to uh, when uh, they don't know about things that are really only designed like tooling and so forth and work processes that they really only make sense if you have a lot of people 
working on something. And I'll give you a really silly example, but let's say version control. If you don't know how to use effective ver version control and the challenges of what it means to have people like not understanding how to do a w uh, work with a good branching strategy and doing like pull requests and code reviews and all that stuff, I can immediately know that you have never worked as a part of a team. Because if I ask you what you what type of version control strategy, like what branching strategy do you like, and you don't and if you answer I, I don't know I just pour, push to master as an example I know that you've never worked with other de developers in your entire life or I guess at to that point because the, it would be it, it only makes sense to know about that stuff usually if you have worked with other developers but then you can push that even further and you can go to a really big company and say uh, and ask, uh, like, depending on what branching, branching strategy they have, uh, that might make sense at their scale because maybe they have a few hundred developers, but then you go up to the size of, say, Facebook or Google, where they literally have to create custom tool tooling and, like, specific custom workflows for how they branch things uh, with, like, benevolent, benevolent dictator patterns and stuff like that, where the, the, the reason why they have that is because if they had the normal branching strategy, like a trunk-based thing or a git flow type of thing, they would never be able to merge anything because they literally have thousands of people committing code so frequently that there's never a situation when, I mean, shit, you're going to have to pull again or like get all your stuff again even before you have done the first pull you're never going to be able to to push because people are pushing all the time uh, so that's what I'm saying like that's the major difference it's just really down to okay what's the scope of what you're doing so as a freelancing software creator odds are that you're probably gonna do like the actual syntax like the actual code in the same sort of way but you may never uh, have to know about CI pipelines or different types of infrastructure questions and so forth unless I mean you're probably gonna host some stuff depending on the scope of your, your projects right uh, but it's it's simply it is simply down to I would say the complexity uh, and the scope of the like the size of the project. Everything else should be pretty much the same, really. So what I want you to take away from this is that from my perspective, I would say that the technical difference between doing freelancing work and working in a cons like a a product company is just the size of the of the code it's you're still gonna use the same stack usually in the same like programming languages and servers and like all of the like cloud infrastructure and so forth it's just that you're not gonna use most of the stuff that is out there because you simply don't need it as an example uh, you do if you know I don't know how to use EC2 instances on Amazon and do some simple VPC stuff or maybe use LightSail or whatever you're doing, right? That, that's going to be most more than enough in setting up DNS and so forth. That's going to be enough for almost every single freelancing project that you're ever going to take on. Well, not always, but I hope that you understand because most of your customers are not going to be major corporations with super systems. But on the other hand, if you're going to work in a bigger company and you're part of a product company, you're going to have to deal with tooling and problems that only exist for companies that have multiple teams or multiple distributed systems and so forth. That's the main difference. But everything else, the actual process of delivering software and writing code and so forth, it's pretty much the same. Uh, and But uh, also uh, hidden in this little rant of mine uh, is that one message. Uh, the uh, there is a tell, and it's not something. This is the reason why the technical interview is a very big thing for a lot of companies, because by asking you as an example, what is your branching strategy, or how do you, what challenges have you felt that you faced when working with multiple teams and so forth, there will be no way for you to fake that answer. If you are a junior developer or have never worked at the higher levels of software development, that's why one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, why it's not possible for you to lie. If you ever, if you've only ever been a freelancer, you will not have the answers to the questions that someone asks would ask someone they expect has worked at the bigger IT companies or whatever they've been doing, right? Because it's so different. Like the type, the considerations you have to make are worlds apart. But the coding, pretty much the same. Have a great day.